Hello Aries and welcome to your June 2024 horoscope. This month we've got a new moon in Gemini happening on the 6th of June at 16 degrees. On the 25th of May Jupiter has arrived in this area of your life and you've got a new moon here. There is a lot of mental activity activated here with these energies. A great time for learning, studying, reading, working with your with words in general. And you might have this strong need to express yourself in some intellectual way. And perhaps you'll be starting in your course of study. And this could be about some new projects uh, or perhaps a podcast. Uh, but also this could be about signing new contracts, uh, making new connections with other people. Perhaps there could be new neighbors moving into your neighborhood. Or perhaps you'll be traveling around this time. So whatever the scenario here, movement, action, communication, um, intellectual and, and mental energy is very much highlighted. Now, this new moon will square Saturn in Pisces in your 12th house. And overall, Saturn can create um, delays. Saturn can also um, create obstacles along the way. However, here with Saturn being activated in your 12th house, um, well, the, Saturn could bring tension, difficulties in communication, learning, mental activities temporarily. It's all about being flexible and, and adaptable. It's all about going with a flow as well, with that um, mutable energy. And here, patience, persistence, especially when it comes to overcoming any obstacles that come your way. It's all about finding practical solutions as well. But here at the same time, this is also, um, if you'll be traveling, make sure you check your um, train uh, times, um, make sure you you check there aren't any delays uh, and so on because here Saturn can create a little bit of um, that um, frustrating energy. So it's something to keep in mind overall. It doesn't have to be overly dr dramatic, but here also um, squares um, offer um, an opportunity for making progress. If there aren't any squares or positions, then we are unlikely to make, make much progress. Overcoming a square is really rewarding. So taking it as a challenge rather than an obstacle. Now, here on um, the, um, the 10th of June until July the 21st, Mars will be in Taurus in your second house. So here your focus will shift towards practical material matters and you might feel really, really motivated to follow some of your financial goals, dreams, objectives. And this could be connected to your career, to your work as well, since we will have a full moon in uh, your 10th house of career later in the month. But at the same time, with um, Mars transiting this area of your life uh, between the 10th of June, 21st of July, you need to be mindful when it comes to your outgoings during this time, because Mars transiting this area of your life tends to increase um, your need or our need for spending and for accumulating um, resources, possessions as well. Now, on the 22nd of June, we've got a full moon in Capricorn happening at one degree of Capricorn. Something interesting about this full moon is that uh, we will have two full moons in Capricorn and one will be here in June. The other one will be in Ju uh, in July at 29 degrees, an anoretic degree. So here with um, the full moon happening twice in this area of your life, here clearly there is something going on or something that needs to be addressed connected to your professional life growth and development. Think about what happened in your life around 18 months ago during the new moon in Capricorn this will be very significant and that would uh, take us uh, to January 2023, um, so last year. Think about what was happening in your career around that time because here uh, we've got two full months at this point. So overall here this full moon brings a spotlight on your career, your public image, long-term goals and this could be a really, really significant time for your career achievements, for a recognition, for your hard work. Uh, perhaps this could be about the completion of a, an important professional project taking place. And you might feel more ambitious and, and more um, responsible, more determined uh, around this time as well. And it's an amazing opportunity here to um, evaluate uh, your progress 
and perhaps to make any necessary adjustments, changes when it comes to your long-term career plans. Now, something to watch out for with this full moon, this full moon forms an out of sign square with Neptune in Pisces. At this point, Neptune is um, at a very late degree of Pisces, uh, 29th degree, and uh, it, there we've got an out of uh, sign square. And this can bring a possible conflict between um, practical considerations when it comes to your career objectives, goals, hopes, ambitions, and your dreams. Uh, or perhaps uh, a need to balance your career with your spiritual goals, uh, objectives, for example. So it's really important whenever Neptune is activated to be grounded. And it's not you, it's not a good time for rushing with any major, major life-changing decisions. Sit down and think it through. Avoid ma making major decision, uh, decisions based purely on idealistic or, or vague um, impressions. Now, finally, the final event for the month uh, is Saturn stationing retrograde in Pisces at 19 degrees. And that's happening on, the, on June the 29th. And we've got this uh, retrograde until November the 15th, and it will end at 12 degrees. So here we are looking at the degrees between 12 and 19 of Pisces. These will be very significant. You will get um, a lot of triggers here if you have any placements between these degrees because Saturn would have already crossed these degrees. Now it will retrograde, so it will go over these uh, points again. It will So you've got like three, three uh, triggers here. So clearly there, there is something that needs your attention, especially here, 12 to 19 degrees of Pisces. Have a look. But overall here, this retrograde brings um, a period of uh, reflection, introspection, especially when it comes to your spiritual growth. Anything to do with subconscious uh, patterns, hidden limitations, phobias, fears, addictions. And during this time, you might be um, reassessing, uh, reevaluating past experiences. Uh, perhaps you'll be addressing some unresolved issues connected to, to anything to do with phobias, addictions, uh, um, your achievements. Um, any, any unfulfilled goals, for example. So overall, approach this, this time with patience, uh, self-awareness, uh, meditation. Uh, it's, it's really amazing uh, during this time. Yoga uh, and grounding exercises, spending time in nature, listening to music, journaling as well. Because this will really, really help you towards uh, personal growth, personal development, uh, spiritual development as well. All right. So here we go. Thank you very much, Aries. I wish you a pleasant month and until the next time. Bye for now. Hello, Taurus, and welcome to your June 2024 horoscope. And here this month, we've got a new moon happening on the 6th of June at 16 degrees of Gemini, activating your area of finances. Now, Jupiter moved here on the 25th of May and will stay here until June 2024. And here with this new moon, you've got an opportunity for establishing um, a better relationship with your finances. Perhaps you'll be setting new financial goals during this time. So whatever the scenario here, this new moon is really prompting you to, to concentrate on your financial stability and security. Your self-worth is highlighted, self-esteem, personal values. It's a really great opportunity to assess your relationship with your money, with finances. It's a great time for setting new financial goals and perhaps for reevaluating your priority. Now, here with um, this new moon, you might have to be more practical and resourceful when it comes to managing your finances. Perhaps you'll be making some major financial decisions, setting new financial goals. Uh, whatever the scenario, this new moon will form a tense connection with Saturn in Pisces. And squares generally offer an opportunity for making progress, but here they could also be connected to an obstacle or some kind of delays. And generally here with the, the squares of Saturn and Pisces in your area of um, 
friendships and and long term goals and plans. Here, this energy creates a possible tension between between your financial stability, between your personal values, and your long term goals and friendships. And this tense energy overall encourages you to find a balance between your financial responsibilities and your social connections and, and your goals and aspirations. So here, try to approach this new moon with um, a strategic mindset. It's all about finding ways to navigate any obstacles or tensions that may pot potentially arise around this time. Right, so on the 10th, we've got Mars moving into Taurus until July the 21st. And here with Mars moving into your first house, this will definitely increase your physical activity and the desire to take charge of your life. And overall, with Mars in the first house, you might feel more confident, more assertive. And generally, this uh, transit gives you that ability to assert your willpower. And this can really truly help you to to um, to reach your goals, um, personal goals, objectives, ambitions. Now. However, with this transit, um, there's also a tendency towards uh, impulsiveness, impatience, leading to possible conflicts with others. So it's something to definitely watch out for. But at the same time here, Mars in the first house can also um, give you that um, feeling of restlessness, perhaps a desire for change or for eliminating any obstacles, any limitations as well, anything that stands in the way overall. And here with, um, overall with Mars in the first house, this can be a really, really energizing, empowering um, transit or time, if you will. But at the same time, it's really important to channel the energy uh, of Mars here in your first house in a productive way. And without avoiding being overly confrontational with others so it's something to def definitely um, watch out for as well but overall it's a great time for reaching your goals objectives and for making progress in your life for exercising for going um, not necessarily on a diet but if you want to get fit and uh, be more active then here this is definitely facilitated by the, the energy of this transit now we've got a full moon in the uh, Cap Capricorn on the 22nd of um, the month and this full moon is happening at one degree of Capricorn June the 22nd bear in mind we are going to have two full moons in Capricorn between June and July at one degree and the second one will be at 29 degrees so clearly there is something that needs your attention in the area where Capricorn is present so that's your Ninth house of foreign travel, foreign people, life direction, freedom, independence, adventure, spontaneity. Now think about what happened in your life around 18 months ago during that new moon in Capricorn back in January 2023. Significant. It can give you a greater clarity of what you might possibly expect to happen this time around. So overall here with um, this full moon activating your area of travel, higher education, life philosophy, life principles. This uh, generally brings um, this strong, strong focus on, on long-term goals, on your ambitions. Now, bear in mind, because this full moon will form an out-of-sign square with Neptune and Pisces in your 11th house. Neptune is at 29 degrees of Pisces at the moment. And this can create a conflict between um, practicality and idealism in this area of your life. So here it's all about maintaining a healthy, healthy balance between realistic goals, achievable goals, and your dreams. Right, so here, finally, we reached the final um, event for this month. That's Saturn stationing retrograde in Pisces at 19 degrees on June the 29th. And this retrograde will end on November the 15th at 12 degrees of Pisces. So we're looking at these degrees between the 12th and the 19th degree of Pisces. This is very significant because these placements will receive three major triggers this year. This is because Saturn would have already crossed these degrees. It will now retrograde. So it will go over these degrees again and it will return when it stations direct. And that will be 
uh, towards the end of this year and into 2025. So overall Saturn retrograde in your area of um, friendships, long-term goals, overall this uh, retrograde invites you. Overall this retrograde um, is about um, reassessing, restructuring your social connections, long-term goals, objectives, aspirations. So this is a great time to really reflect on your role within your groups, groups that you belong to, within your social circle within the communities that you belong to, as well as the stability and authenticity of your friendships and associations. So an amazing opportunity overall to redefine your objectives, to consider how you contribute to collective efforts as well. So overall, use this period for reassessing, re-evaluating your social responsibilities, uh, commitments, friendships, um, long-term goals and hopes as well. All right. So here we go, Taurus. Thank you very much. I wish you a pleasant month. And until the next time, bye for now. Hello, Gemini, and welcome to your June 2024 horoscope. And here this month, We've got um, fresh energies connected to self-discovery, personal growth. We've got a new moon in your sign at 16 degrees of Gemini on the 6th of June. Jupiter is also here along with Venus. So really beautiful energies and uh, a great time for setting intentions uh, connected to self-improvement, self-discovery, self-development. Uh, perhaps this is about also embarking on new projects. Anything that generally will help you to make progress positive and and uh, effective, uh, productive progress in your life. So take a moment uh, during this new moon to reflect on your goals uh, and take action towards achieving them. Now, something to pay attention to is that uh, this new moon will form a tense connection, a square with Saturn in Pisces. And this can create a possible tension between your personal identity, self-expression and your career-related responsibilities and duties. So here, balancing your individual desires and ambitions with the demands of your uh, professional life might require a little bit of patience and strategic plan uh, planning. So here, um, use this period for um, careful planning uh, to find harmony between your sense of self and your long-term career path. Now, Mars moves into Taurus uh, on June the 10th, and it will remain here until June the 21st. So here, Mars is your 12th house, and this could be about uh, following some of your spiritual goals, uh, anything to do with um, spiritual growth, personal development, self-discovery is also very much connected. And uh, at the same time, this uh, transit can also bring uh, increased activity in your private life. You might feel more motivated to spend time alone or perhaps engage uh, in activities uh, connected to spirituality, meditation, journaling. It's a really great time for working independently as well, rather than in group surroundings. But overall, Mars in Taurus can also bring some potential challenges uh, because uh, this is also the energy of Mars in Taurus in the 12th house could lead to potential power struggles or perhaps a tendency towards impulsive or reckless behavioral patterns, especially here since uh, Mars in the 12th house. Um, well, we t uh, with Mars transiting the 12th house, we tend to repress anger. So for this reason, if you feel tense, uh, if you feel, especially after that new moon in Pisces, if you experience some tension in your life, make sure that you find a way to release it. Martial arts, jogging, running, uh, uh, exercising, spending time in nature, you really need to um, do some physical activity or engage in some physical activity in order to release the excess of energies, especially those negative energies that you would have accumulated uh, throughout the duration of this transit. Otherwise, you might feel um, restless or you might be easily triggered uh, otherwise. Now, here we've got a full moon in Capricorn at uh, one degree on the 22nd of June. As an interesting fact, we are going to have two full moons in Capricorn. One will be in June, the other one in July. 
The first one will be at one degree of Capricorn. The second one will be at 29 degrees, an erratic degree of Capricorn. And think about what happened in your life around uh, 18 months ago during uh, the new moon in Capricorn in January 2023. It can give you some insights. It can give you some um, guidance in terms of what you might possibly expect to happen during this um, coming full moon in Capricorn. So that's your eighth house. And here this full moon brings a focus on a deep transformation, emotional in uh, intensity as well as per that eighth house uh, info influence. And it's a really uh, powerful time to, to explore intense emotions, to confront deep fears, phobias as well. So during this full moon, it's a great opportunity to address uh, any issues connected to trust, control, power dynamics, especially in your uh, partnerships in your relationships because by facing any issues connected to these matters you can experience a sense of um, emotional empowerment now bear in mind this full moon will form an out of sign square to neptune in pisces and this can create a possible tension and challenges as well however if we overcome uh, squares then this leads to really really uh, powerful uh, progress in our lives take it as a challenge rather than an obstacle so here uh, with um, the full moon squaring uh, Neptune in Pisces, this can overall trigger conflict between uh, the practical grounded energy of Capricorn and the dreamy idealistic influence of Neptune. So be cautious of, of some uh, misleading or unclear information during this time. And um, if you can, try to avoid uh, making important decisions um, under these circumstances. Now, the final event for this month is Saturn stationing retrograde in Pisces at 19 degrees on June the 29th. This retrograde will last until November the 15th. It will end at 15 degrees of Pisces. So here, Saturn retrograde in Pisces. Um, this is a period of reflection, reassessment, uh, connect around your career around your public reputation, public image, your ambitions, and uh, use this time to, to evaluate your long-term goals, professional responsibilities as well. And um, this is also an opportunity to address any limitations, any challenges. And um, it's a great uh, opportunity also, or potential for making necessary adjustments for achieving more fulfillment in your life, especially um, here in your area of career where this retrograde will be taking place. Now, bear in mind, this retrograde will trigger the degrees between 12 and 19. So you are working in the, with the influences or with, with this energy situations, projects, events that would have occurred this year, um, especially when Saturn um crossed over these degrees so overall you dealing with something of a recent nature more uh, specifically all right so thank you very much um gemini i wish you a pleasant month and until the next time bye for now hello cancers and welcome to your june 2024 horoscope this month here in the initial weeks of uh, June, there is a lot of introspective energy here. Your 12th house is really packed and busy. So you might be a lot in your head in the initial weeks of June. You've got Jupiter, Mercury, the sun, Venus here and a new moon in Gemini on the 6th of June at 16 degrees. So here this new moon highlights uh, introspection and subconscious um, exploration, spirituality, self-discovery. And here... This is an amazing new moon when generally you might feel really drawn to explore the hidden aspects of your life, of your psyche. And perhaps this could be about um, finding solutions to problems that have been on your mind for quite some time. Now, here with the 12th house energy, there is a tendency to overthink to overanalyze if you have to write things down release the energy because you might be a lot in your head there's a lot of mentally simulating uh, simulating simulated energy 
which quote uh, overall leads to that tendency towards overthinking, overanalyzing. So if you're writing things down and uh, perhaps uh, take some time to think things through without repeating your thoughts in your head or maybe looking at them being written on the paper, it will be easier to find practical solutions to any private uh, problems, matters, issues that have been on your mind. Now, at the same time, this is also when... Um, your mental health is is uh, very much highlighted. Perhaps if you struggle with uh, being assertive, if you struggle with um, staying consistent and motivated, this is also a good time for spending um, some of your energy and, and time, perhaps on meditating or um, taking a nice walk out in nature to find these uh, these uh, useful and, and practical solutions that you could apply um, to your life uh, once the sun and Venus Mercury move into your first house in the second part of June. So lots of introspective energy and here you will feel much more energized when the sun moves into your first house because when the sun is in the sign that is before our sun sign or the ascendant sign, very often we feel like we're drawing and, and uh, we need to... We, we need some time alone. Solitude and, and introspection is highlighted. Now, Mars moves into Taurus, uh, into your 11th house of friendships on uh, June the 10th, and it will stay here until July the 21st. And overall, Mars can bring a lot of energy and drive to your social life, friendships, group activities. And um, and it's, it's these energies will kind of clash uh, with uh, all that's what's happening in your 12th house. So you might only feel feel like um, being uh, social and and, uh, and active, maybe when the sun moves into your first house, it might not be as quick as the 10th of June for everyone with so much activity in your 10th house. And even if you spend time in group situations um, with friends, etc., with all these energies in your 12th house, you will need time alone you will need time to recharge yourself because you you will absorb energies, um, external energies very, very easily while the sun and Venus, Mercury remain in your 12th house. So bear that in mind. If you're going to be socially active uh, from the 10th until the 20th of June, then you need to find time to recharge your energies. But overall with the Mars in Taurus uh, until July the 21st, um, this transit can definitely increase your activity in your community involvement uh, and so you might feel even motivated, stimulated to engage in group activities, social causes, for example. But at the same time, be careful because um, there is a tendency to, to be impulsive or to experience power struggles within groups. There is a tendency towards impulsiveness when it comes to social activities and friendships. So it's really important to, to be mindful of these tendencies and to channel the energy of Mars and Taurus in a productive way. Because um, here the, the focus with this transit is on, on building meaningful connections. You have the energy required for that. So don't let it uh, be used in a negative uh, in a negative way or sense. Now on the 22nd, we've got a full moon in Capricorn at one degree of Capricorn. There will be another full moon in July at 29 degrees of Capricorn. So two full moons in your seventh house. So there is clearly something going on here. Whether this is a contract renewal or an end to a contract, whether this is... Uh, a situation in your marriage relationship that needs to be addressed, whatever it is, think about what happened in your life in January 2023. This might be significant for you. It could be connected to um the, 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 the one of these full months. But overall here, a full month in your seven house uh, on the 22nd, your relationships, partnerships, uh, contracts you have with other people are highlighted. And this could be a time of culmination fulfillment in this area of your life. And you might find yourself reassessing uh, your relationships, your commitments, contracts you have with other people. This is also about uh, wanting to achieve a healthy balance between your, your own needs and desires and the desires and the needs of others of your partner, for example. So overall here, uh, a lot of attention is centered around your unions, relationships, partnerships. But here we've got 
a, an out of sign square with Neptune as well. The full moon will form an out of sign square with Neptune in Pisces. And this can bring a certain degree of confusion and illusion when it comes to your relationships, partnerships. And um, you you might feel uncertain about um, some something that is going on in, in, in your relationship unions contract. Perhaps this is also connected um, to your, the boundaries or commitment in your relationships. So you will have to be careful and mindful of any potential misunderstandings or unrealistic expectations within your relationships during this time. Be careful of any potential deception or confusion as well. Now, Saturn will be retrograde in Pisces uh, from June the 29th until November the 15th. And this retrograde starts at 19 degrees and it will end at 12 degrees. So we've got pretty much the 12 to the 19 degree um, influence here in Pisces. Pisces rules your ninth house. So here with this retrograde, you will be reevaluating your life principles, your belief system, your long-term plans uh, connected to self personal growth, development, um, and you might find yourself uh, also reflecting uh, upon your um, worldviews or philosophical views, for example. Perhaps this is connected to also returning to some studies or language courses. Now, this retrograde also offers an amazing opportunity to take a look at any limitations or self-imposed restrictions that may hinder your intellectual or perhaps spiritual development. It's an amazing uh, retrograde as well for reassessing your goals, objectives, aspirations for the future. See whether they align with where you want to be heading. Thank you very much. I wish you a pleasant month and until the next time. Bye for now. morning. Hello Leos and welcome to your June 2024 horoscope. This month starts with a new moon in Gemini happening on the 6th of June at 16 degrees of Gemini. Gemini, this is your 11th house and this new moon highlights uh, your social connections, group activities, group involvement, but also your long-term goals, hopes, plans for the future. So it's a really amazing time to concentrate on your um, involvement within certain groups in your life, friendships, but also this is connected to your aspirations for the future, your goals, hopes, dreams, objectives, especially since Jupiter is also here since the 25th of May. So it's an amazing time for networking, for collaborating with like-minded people, people, but also for setting uh, new goals, objectives uh, connected to professional growth and development, but also personal. Now, something also that uh, is important to note during this time is um, the square to Saturn in Pisces. So this new moon will form a tense uh, square with Saturn in Pisces in your eighth house of uh, transformation um, deep matters. So squares offer an opportunity for making progress and they can create tension, they can create obstacles, but here with squares, we can make really, really rewarding uh, progress, forward momentum even, if we face uh, the energies, the challenges that emerge. So here the square to Saturn in Pisces can create tension between your desire for intellectual simulation and your responsibilities or perhaps your limitations um, connected to shared finances, resources, intimate relationships. Now, this square can also challenge you um, to find balance between your social life, your outside world, and your emotional, um, financial commitments, for example. Now, Mars enters Taurus on June the 10th, and it will stay here until July the 21st. Taurus, that's your 10th house. Now, when Mars moves into the 10th house, it brings a boost of energy and drive to your career, to your reputation, public image. So overall here, it is likely to be a very busy phase 
connected to your career growth development, any career related projects, lots of action movement overall. But here you might feel more assertive, confident when it comes to following your professional goals. And there's also a tendency to take risks more often than usual. So keep this in mind. But at the same time, this transit can also can also increase your activity in your public life, especially since you've got so many energies in your 11th house of social activities, networking, especially here in the first three weeks of um, June. And what it is, is that um, there could be possibilities for social networking, for public engagement of some sort, or perhaps for social activities, uh, business networking events, which actually it will be beneficial for you to take part in, especially since you've got so many beneficial planets in your um, 11th house, especially until the 20th of June. But at the same time with Mars squaring your Leo ascendant, you need to be careful and mindful of any potential challenges such as, such as power uh, struggles or conflicts in your workplace. Now with Mars in the 10th house, there's also a tendency towards overworking or burning out. So it's, it's use this energy of Mars in your 10th house in a productive way. Concentrate on achieving your goals, your career goals, but at the same time, prioritize uh, balance, self-care so that you don't experience a feeling of burnout if you purely dedicate your energy to, towards work, career, success. Now we've got a full moon in Capricorn on uh, June the 22nd at one degree of Capricorn. There will be two full moons in Capricorn, in fact. Uh, the other one will be at 29 degrees in July. Think about what happened in your life uh, in January 2023 because um, you might be experiencing similar energies or experiences or perhaps uh, there could be similar people who also were present in your life in January 2023 they might be also involved in 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 this full moon story so full moon in the Capricorn that's your um, sixth house and with two full moons in your sixth house I think many Leos will be going through some health checkups health appointments blood tests this sort of things I think it's really beneficial in fact but um, here there's a lot of uh, attention centered around uh, duties, responsibilities, hard work. Mars is in your 10th house, two full moons in the 6th house. I think there's a lot of energy centered around, around work, hard work, discipline, responsibility in June. And perhaps that need for structure, for being organized, efficient, effective uh, uh, in, in your daily life. It's also highlighted. Now, this full moon forms an out of sign square with Neptune in Pisces, and that's um, in your eighth house. So, this energy can create a tension between uh, practicality, that's the Capricorn energy, and intuition, that's the Neptune in Pisces energy. So, here there is um, this need for finding uh, a healthy balance between structure and flexibility, but at the same time, be mindful of any confusions or perhaps um, idealism that could potentially impact your work, um, your daily routine. So it's all about being grounded and, and staying present in, in the, in the um, reality overall in order to avoid making any unnecessary mistakes or wrong decisions. Saturn will station retrograde in Pisces on June the 29th at 19 degrees until November 15th. So we've got um, this retrograde ends at 12 degrees of Pisces. And Saturn retrograde brings um, a period of introspection, of um, re-evaluation as well, especially of um, some deeply seated emotions, feelings, traumas, for example. Now, this is also a time when you will be possibly re-evaluating um, anything to do with shared resources, finances, and uh, generally, there is a lot of transformative energy that is taking place here as well. An amazing opportunity to reflect on any issues related to trust, control, intimacy, financial matters, uh, especially the financial matters that involve others. A great time for exploration, for reassessing your approach towards um, shared responsibilities. Amazing time. 
Because uh, during this time, you can also address any underlying fears, insecurities, anything that stands in the way towards your ability to achieve a greater emotional and financial stability as well. All right. So here we go, Leos. Thank you very much. I wish you a pleasant month. And until the next time, bye for now. Hello Virgos and welcome to your June 2024 horoscope. Here the initial phase of a June is centered around your career. It's an amazing time for making good, good progress. Jupiter is here, we've got the Sun, Mercury, Venus and a new moon in Gemini at 16 degrees of Gemini on June the 6th. So here there is a lot of energy centered around your career, professional life growth. This is a prime time to set new career goals and, and channel your energy towards achieving your objectives, professional ambitions. So here, networking, communication, seeking out new opportunities are especially, especially favored during this period. So use this time to, to set clear intentions for your career path and let the energy of the new moon guide you towards success. Don't get discouraged if, you, um, if there are some roadblocks blockages are along the way because we've got a square to Saturn in Pisces so this could mean that uh, there could be some tension there could be some restricting energies um, or obstacles uh, coming from the area of partnerships or perhaps some disagreements uh, or something or someone standing in the way towards your success professional life growth here with patience and and uh, and, and uh, determination you can really really overcome any challenge that comes uh, your way now on June the 10th until July the 21st, Mars will be in Taurus in your ninth house. So here during this time, you can generally expect a lot of energy centered around your area of life direction, travel, higher education. This transit can make you more assertive and confident when it comes to following your intellectual and spiritual passions. You might have this really strong desire during this time to take risks, to to explore new ideas and new perspectives. And you might also feel a strong pull towards travel, adventure. It's a great time for generally exploring new places, new cultures. However, here with uh, Mars transiting Taurus in, in, in your ninth house, there could also be some challenges on, or conflicts um, or maybe even power struggles sur surrounded around um your religious beliefs or your life philosophy, or perhaps there, there is often a tendency towards impulsiveness when it comes to travel or, or perhaps um, someone disagreeing with your worldviews, with your life principles, for example. So be mindful of, of these potential um, pitfalls and try to channel the energy of Mars in a productive way. It's a great time to expand your knowledge and, and horizons uh, as long as um, you stay focused. But at the same time, um, Mars with Mars in, in the ninth house, it's also essential to um, be understanding, uh, especially when it comes to other people having different points of views, worldviews, and so on. Now there's a full moon in Capricorn at one degree on June the 22nd. And this full moon is one of the first out of the two full moons in Capricorn that will occur between June and July this year. This full moon brings a focus on productivity, creativity, self-expression. This is your fifth house. So that inner child, reconnecting with that inner child could be very much the theme as well. But overall, this is an ideal time to try to channel your energy towards uh, achieving your goals, your objectives, especially in the area connected to your passion or perhaps your children or the romantic side of your life. Now, with that Capricorn influence, it's all about taking a disciplined approach to, to following your goals, objectives, passions. And here you can really make good progress with this full moon. But at the same time, think about what happened in your life around January 2023, because this will be significant. This is the continuation of the cycle that started around that time. Or some people from that period in time could be also um, present in this, um, in the present life situation. So we have a square to Neptune during this time and an out of sign square. And this can create um, 
a struggle between practicality and idealism, especially in the areas connected to creativity, romance, self-expression. So here, this this um, out of science square could also um, bring uh, to light any illusions or confusions surrounded around your um, romantic side of life, your parenting style, your um, ability to be your true and authentic self. So uh, here we've got this great opportunity to reflect and find a balance between your practical responsibilities and your dreams and imagination. Now on June the 29th, Saturn will be retrograde in Pisces at 19 degrees until November the 15th. And this retrograde ends at 12 degrees. So here this retrograde uh, will be activating your 12th house, uh, sorry, your 7th house. And um, Saturn retrograde in your 7th house would stimulate you to, to reassess your partnerships, your commitments, and one-to-one -one relationships. So use this time to reflect on the dynamics of your relationships and address any unresolved issues, unresolved matters. And generally, this this period, this this um, retrograde phase of Saturn offers um, a chance to improve the foundations of your relationships and address any imbalances or, or in limitations even that um, may be present. Overall, this is a period of potential growth and restructuring in your approach to, to um, interpersonal connections, love, relationships, partnerships. All right, so here we go, Virgos. Thank you very much. I wish you a pleasant month. And until the next time, bye for now. Hello Libras and welcome to your June 2024 horoscope. We start a month with a lot of influence in your ninth house of foreign travel and your life philosophy, life principles. Uh, Jupiter has moved here on May the 25th and uh, here on the 6th of June there is a new moon in Gemini happening at 16 degrees here, activating your area of exploration, expansion, learning life philosophy. Now, this uh, new moon really, really encourages you to broaden your horizons, to seek new experiences, and generally to embrace a spirit of adventure as per that Gemini um, energy. So it's a really great time for um, learning, studying, traveling, engaging in um, intellectual activities. Um, and overall, this new one may also inspire you to explore different belief systems, cultures, study astrology, or perhaps uh, study a new language. Uh, so there's a lot of energy connected to that expansive and intellectual Mm, wisdom. Now here, this new moon will square Saturn in Pisces in your sixth house and um, squares can um, in potentially indicate uh, challenges, obstacles that come our way. But if we overcome the challenge, then um, this signifies a really empowering progress. And here, the obstacles or challenges that may uh, may happen uh, will be related to your aspirations uh, for um, exploration and learning. So your desire for learning and 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 uh, exploration. So here, this square could indicate a need um, to work diligently to to overcome um, a certain degree of limitations, restrictions. Uh, in these areas of life, as a result of um, external influences, other people, uh, or your life circumstances, um, this could be also related to increased responsibilities. Um, so, overall, here, if something stands in the way towards your need um, for expansion or making progress, exploration, then instead of uh, giving up, approach this uh, period, this new moon with patience, perseverance. Uh, it's all about uh, finding practical solutions to any difficulties that may arise. And it's all about staying focused as well on your long-term goals and despite potential obstacles that may occur around this time. Now we've got Mars moving into Taurus on June the 10th until July the 21st. And here with that Taurian energy in your eighth house, you may feel a surge of energy and drive towards um, intimacy, personal transformation on a very deep level. And this transit may also lead to increased uh, activity in your financial 
affairs uh, and this can motivate you to make positive changes as well so here this could mean that you'll be um, investing uh, your money or perhaps uh, finding ways to to um, save more money or um, earn more money through through investments commissions bonuses but at the same time here with uh, mars uh, in the eighth house this could also mean that your expenses um might increase so it's really essential to watch your spendings what's your budget during this time so just uh, june the 10th until july the 21st and so with such intense energy here um pay attention because um this energy could also potentially lead to uh, power struggles or conflicts uh, in intimate relationships uh, so um, here Watch out for any tendencies towards impulsive decisions, especially those regarding shared resources and finances. So it's essential to to generally channel the, the, this Martian energy in a productive way. On the 22nd, we've got a full moon in Capricorn at, at one degree. This is the first out of the two full moons we'll have um, throughout June and July. The first one will be at one degree of Capricorn, the next one will be at 29 degrees of Capricorn. Think about what happened in your life around 18 months ago in January 2023. This is significant because uh, you might be dealing with a similar situation, similar energies, people, circumstances that occurred back in January 2023 as we are dealing with this um, cycle of the lunation that started around that time. Now here and this full moon um, signals uh, the culmination or, or a completion of, of a cycle related to home, um, to your family dynamics, uh, emotional foundations as well. And this full moon highlights uh, themes uh, of responsibility, tradition, ambition um, in your personal life, as well as in your domestic environment. So take some time to reflect uh, on your, rela your relationship with your family, sense of security, this is perhaps um, about finding balance between your professional aspirations and emotional well-being since the sun will be in your 10th house, the full moon in the 4th. So we've got this opposition between these two important areas of life. And overall, the full moon in Capricorn, um, this particular full moon, forms a tense out of sign square with Neptune in Pisces. And this can create a tension between your need for stability and structure and the influence uh, of your dreams, illusions, um, and uh, delusions. So here, this energy um, exchange um, between the full moon and, and, uh, and Neptune may also indicate a struggle to, to balance uh, practicality, reality with idealism or illusion. So here it's it's generally really important to pay attention to, to the energies of this full moon and don't make any rash decisions because uh, Neptune could overcloud your judgment. So don't rush it, sit down, think it through. Now on June the 29th, we've got Saturn uh, stationing retrograde in Pisces at 19 degrees and this retrograde will end on November the 15th at 12 degrees. So we've got uh, quite a few months of this retrograde. It happens every single year, so it's not something unusual. But um, here during this time, you will have this amazing uh, opportunity here. Sixth house is highlighted, by the way, to reevaluate your daily routines, daily habits, your work ethics, your work habits, your skills, your daily routine, your, I've uh, already said that, but um, also your overall well being. Now, perhaps this would be also a great time to reflect on, on anything to do with your health and, and, uh, your work environment, your relationship with coworkers, for example, and your efficiency, productivity in your work environment, for example. Now, this retrograde offers a chance to address uh, any limitations, any any um, obstacles um, that are triggering that uh, productivity or your overall wellness. So, it's a time for um, self improvement, self development as well. And it's a great time for reassessing um, your approach to work, health, self-care. All right. So here we go, Libras. Thank you very much. Have a great month. And until the next time, bye for now. Hello, Scorpius, and welcome to your June 2024 horoscope. We start the month with a new moon in Gemini happening on the 6th of June at 16 degrees of Gemini. And this new moon highlights your 
area of shared resources, intimacy, transformation. So that's your eighth house, uh, traditionally associated with the energy of Scorpio. Now, this new one can bring opportunities for deep uh, conversations, learning, healing, transformation, exploration of uh, taboo subjects. It's a really amazing time for research, for uncovering secrets, uh, for honest communication with your partner, with your business partner about um, shared finances, resources, personal growth. And generally, this new one encourages a really curious and, and an open mindset, especially when it comes to embracing change um, in your life. Now, this new one forms a tense um, connection with um, Saturn Pisces in your fifth house. And uh, here, overall squares represent tension and challenges, but uh, with uh, a little bit of effort, we can overcome the challenges uh, that uh, can be presented by a square, and this will generally lead to a sense of uh, fulfillment and, and uh, that ability to make good progress. So while you embrace new beginnings um, here with the new moon energy in Gemini thr throughout this time, the influence of, of discipline, responsibility, in your creative pursuits, romance, self-expression may create a need for balancing practicality and structure here. That's a Saturnian energy here with your desire to explore and take risks. So here it's all about staying focused on your goal, patient, determined, persistent. And um, if you put in consistent efforts to achieve long-term um, success, you can see some really amazing um, outcomes. Now, Mars, uh, your traditional ruler, um, enters Taurus on June the 10th until July the 21st. So that's your seventh house. Mars is leaving the sixth house, the area of everyday life, everyday um, routine, and is moving into your seventh house. And here the energy and drive um, in your relationships, partnerships, collaborations um, will be very, very high when Mars transits this area of your life. So you will feel assertive and confident and motivated to follow your personal and professional um, goals. But at the same time, there is energy connected to taking risks, to risk taking by forming a new and healthy connections with others. Of course, Mars uh, is connected to passion and drive. Yes, it can bring a lot of passionate energy and it can increase your social activity and encourage you, um, perhaps encourage you to network with others. It can generally create networking opportunities overall. However, it's really important that you are mindful of potential conflicts, impulsive decisions during this time and uh, potential power struggles. Remember that whatever happens in the seventh house is in opposition to your seventh house. So we learn lessons about how to collaborate, how to cooperate with others harmoniously, how to meet halfway. So yes, there is a potential for disagreements and, and uh, clashes of energy with Mars. It's not going to be all very easy, but at the same time, you can learn a lot about yourself, about um, how, how you um, are perceived by uh, the other person in these one-to-one -one connections. So lots of interesting uh, energies here. To try to channel the energy of Mars in Taurus into building healthy and productive relationships. Um, it's really essential to be aware of, of your needs and boundaries during this time, as well as the needs and desires of the other person you're dealing with. Now, the full moon in Capricorn on June the 22nd happens at one degree of Capricorn. This is the first out of the two full moons in Capricorn. The second one will be in uh, July at 29 degrees. So clearly there's something going on here in the area of Capricorn. Your third house communication movement travel is highlighted. And overall, think about what happened in your life um, in January last year, 2023, because that's when this uh, lunar cycle began. OK, so the full moon is the uh, mid cycle and things are usually revealed. There is a full awareness, full understanding. And this full moon signals a completion or, or a culmination of a cycle related to communication, learning, uh, your immediate environment as well as immediate surroundings. And here, practicality, ambition, responsibility here, all the Capricorn keywords will be in the spotlight. And they will really, really prompt you to reflect on your communication style, your role, um, um, 
of structure in your life and the balance between um, logic and emotions in your thought pr uh, processes. Because here, the third house deals with our mindset, our um, judgment, communication style. So use this time to integrate your ambitions, your long-term goals, desires with your daily interactions and intellectual activities, projects. But watch out for potential Tension as this full moon in Capricorn in your third house forms an out of sign square with Neptune in Pisces. The way that this could play out in your life could be that your need for practicality and structure, uh, structured thinking might clash with the influence of dreams, illusions, spirituality, um, perhaps confusion as per that Neptune in Pisces influence. So try to stay grounded. And pay attention to any tendencies towards confusion, escapism during this time. Especially pay attention because these might affect your communication and mental clarity as well. Now we end the month with Saturn retrograde in the Pisces. And here Saturn retrograde occurs every single year. And we had one already last year in Pisces. So this is the second one. But here we are dealing with the middle degrees from the 12th to the 19th. The retrograde starts at 19 degrees of uh, Pisces. It ends at 12 degrees of Pisces on November the 15th. So here, Pisces, that's your fifth house, uh, self-expression, creativity, children, romance, your hobbies, your interests. So this is going to be a period of uh, when you will be reassessing your creative expression, your romantic side of your life, uh, your approach to, to leisure, um, your ability to express yourself freely, authentically, your parenting style as well. So take this time to reconsider your your skills, your talents, um, your hobbies, how you find joy in your life, your relationships with others, and perhaps um, try to address any self-imposed um, limitations of, or fears even that might be holding you back from embracing pleasure and, and self-expression, authentic self-expression especially. So a great opportunity for re structuring your approach to creativity, personal fulfillment even. Right, so here we go. Thank you very much, um, Scorpius. And uh, until the next time, bye for now. Hello, Sagittarius, and welcome to your horoscope for June 2024. Right. So here this month, there is a lot of emphasis, especially in the initial phase of this month, uh, upon your one-to-one -one connections, uh, interactions with others, relationships, love, partnerships, uh, contracts you have with other people. So that's your seventh house. We've got the new moon in Gemini on June the 6th at 16 degrees. And this new moon marks a time for um, a fresh start, new beginnings uh, in the area of partnerships, relationships, collaborations. So here we've got uh, this great opportunity for um, possibly forming uh, new connections with others, uh, for um, being more authentic within your relationships, uh, perhaps about an open communication, an honest communication with someone important in your life, uh, exchange of ideas with others. It's a perfect time to do to renew partnerships, to negotiate agreements, engage in um, some ventures of some sort. And um, I think this is also about finding uh, balance and harmony in your relationships overall. Now, we've got a square to Saturn at this point as well. And uh, that's your fourth house. So here, this new moon will square Saturn. Squares uh, represent tension, challenges, but at the same time, if we can overcome the tension that is uh, signified, symbolized by the square, we can make really, really good progress in our life. So overall, this um, aspect uh, between the new moon and Saturn uh, highlights um, the potential for a clash between your desire for new beginnings in your relationships, partnerships, and perhaps uh, the influence of discipline or responsibility or limitations happening in your home, family, um, and your know, emotional foundations here are highlighted as well, the square. So you might have to find a healthy balance between your need for connection, for growth, with um, the, the need for, for um, patience, structure, stability in your personal life. So try to approach any, relation, any new relationships or any new relationship dynamics during this time with a very realistic and a practical, disciplined mindset. 
while at the same time acknowledging the, the importance of long-term commitment and emotional security. Since um, Saturn is all about long-term and consistency. Now, Mars enters Taurus on June the 10th until July the 21st. Taurus, that's your sixth house of everyday life, routine, work, health. So with Mars in the sixth house, um, you get this massive boost of energy and drive um, in your work, health, daily routine, and you will overall feel more assertive, more confident when it comes to following your goals, your tasks, and you might even be more willing to take risks in your professional life. Now, this trance can also bring an increase in physical activity and, um, and a drive, motivation, encouragement even to make changes in your health, fitness routine even. So you you might have this strong need to be active, to be stay fit, to, to um, generally look after yourself um, more consistently. Right, so just something to keep in mind is um, that this transit could potentially um, lead to some challenges, especially when it comes to conflicts or power struggles uh, in your workplace. So perhaps there is a tendency towards uh, working too much, overworking, burning out, especially if you don't find a healthy balance, if you purely dedicate your life uh, to work and responsibilities, duties without any fun or at least um, time for pleasure, leisure or rest, then you will burn out and you will be demotivated very quickly. So be mindful of these tendencies and, and channel the energy of Mars in a productive way because you can achieve so much with Mars in the sixth house as long as you are being mindful of, of, of your own health as well. Right, so we've got, um, we finished the month with Saturn retrograde in Pisces at 19 degrees. And here Saturn retrograde uh, on the is, uh, starts on the June, June, June the 29th at 19 degrees. It ends uh, in November, on November the 15th at 12 degrees. So we are dealing with the middle degrees of Pisces. Last year we had a, um, a Saturn retrograde that, that was with the, in the initial degrees of Pisces. Here we are dealing with the middle degrees. Okay, so that's your fourth house. Introspective energy, energy connected to reevaluation of your emotional foundations, of your life, of your home life, of your feelings of security, stability, family dynamics as well. Now, this, this retrograde might uh, stimulate you, prompts you to reflect on, on issues related to home life, uh, your roots, your heritage, your innermost sense of comfort and safety as well. So use this use this time to, to address any deep-seated fears, insecurities that might be stopping your ability to establish a solid emotional foundation and base. It's an amazing opportunity for um, reassessing um, your approach to, to creating a nurturing and supportive environment for yourself and, and your family members, your loved ones. Right, so here we go, Sagittarius. Thank you very much. Have a great month and uh, until the next time. Bye for now. Hello, Capricorns, and welcome to your June 2024 horoscope. Here this month, we start with a new moon on the 6th of June, and this new moon will be in the sign of Gemini, the sign of duality at 16 degrees. So have a look if you have any placements around this time, because it will be significant. Usually uh, conjunctions uh, to our natal placements um, indicate uh, major breakthroughs. So have a look, definitely. But anyway, um, moving forward, uh, what this um, new moon really uh, means uh, for you. Now, Gemini, this is um, your sixth house. So the, the the themes connected to this area of life are related to your daily life, daily routines, your work life, your health, uh, and uh, your co-workers. So overall, this new moon, um, there, with this new moon, there's a strong focus um, upon being efficient, being organized. And anything to do with self-improvement, uh, especially when it comes to your daily life, to your work, is also highlighted. Now, here it's a really uh, great opportunity to establish uh, new habits, uh, new routines, take on new projects, especially those that will enhance your skills and try to prioritize your well-being during this time as well. 
Now here, this new moon um, brings attention to your work environment as well, your relationship with your colleagues, co-workers, prompting you to seek harmony, productivity um, in your professional interactions on daily, uh, regular basis. So lots of interesting energy here and um Something to watch out for here is that uh, this new moon will form a, a square tense connection with uh, Saturn and Pisces. And this suggests that um, there might be some challenges uh, or some limitations related to your daily life, daily routine, work, communication, maybe even. And um, here with this square, it's... it's um, and it's essential to to face face these these tense energies uh, with patience, with perseverance, especially when it comes to managing your daily life. And, and don't get discouraged if there is a little obstacle along the way, because as you uh, overcome any tense energies, so this leads to a sense of empowerment and and uh, good and consistent progress as well. So try to approach this new moon, this phase, um, these initial weeks of June in a practical with a practical mindset, uh, seeking resolutions, solutions to your problems rather than um, getting discouraged and demotivated. Right, so because it's all about uh, long-term stability, long-term goals under the Saturian influence. Now, here we've got Mars. Mars will be moving to Taurus on June the 10th, and it will stay here until July the 21st. This is your fifth house, uh, and this the fifth house deals with creativity, self-expression, love, life, children. And here with Mars transiting this uh, this area of your life, this could indicate an increased activity, passion in your romantic side of life. Um, this could also indicate um, an eagerness, motivation to deal with uh, certain projects and, and anything to do with freelancing, self-employment is really enhanced when Mars transits this area of your life. Mars um, gives you a lot of strength, drive, motivation, energy, and um, use this energy in a productive way. And you can do so by um, exploring your creative side of psyche. Perhaps there is, you might have this need to express your creative urges in some way as well. But lots of um, beautiful energy connected to, to that need to, to have fun to to engage in some interesting hobbies or interests to, to um, just enjoy life the simple pleasures of life now is the time for doing so here from june the 10th until july the 21st for those who have children it could be also increased activity with uh, with uh, with children whether they will be attending lots of social events or whether there will be things happening at school. It could be that there will be quite a lot ha um, happening. So you will have to manage your time wisely, effectively, since uh, this is also happening um, throughout the Gemini season where the emphasis is on being productive here for you specifically with your sixth house activity. Right, so we've got a full moon in Capricorn in your first house on June the 22nd. Overall here, June, July are really big months for you, Capricorn, because you've got a full moon in both months. Here in June, there is a full moon at one degree of Capricorn. In July, it will be at 29 degrees. So both degrees are really either very early or very, very late. Really interesting energies. Here, think about what happened in your life around January 2023. That's when this cycle started, began. Here you have a little hint um, what you might possibly be dealing with around this full moon and this full moon illuminates of course your first house um, and this generally marks uh, the completion of a cycle connected to your personal identity self-expression and also your approach to the world to life and here this full moon here with that capricorn influence being fully fully activated uh, here we've got themes of responsibility ambition practicality similarly to what we um what i discussed earlier with the new moon in gemini in your sixth house so this also this full moon is also about um, how you present yourself to others how you assert your individuality so it's a great time to reflect upon your goals upon your achievements and perhaps the way that you project yourself to the world, perhaps for some Capricorns, this could be a time when you will feel like you want to reinvent yourself, 
when you want to change your style or something uh, with your hair, hairstyle, physical appearance as well. And perhaps if there hasn't been enough structure in your life, if things have been, has been, have been overly chaotic here in June, you have an opportunity for establishing uh, more structure, more um, stability, discipline as well. Now, this full moon will form an out of sign uh, square with Neptune and Pisces, and this can bring te tension between your need for responsibility and structure and the influence of your dreams uh, of, of um, maybe some confusion or some illusion or perhaps uh, some idealistic goals and dreams, for example. So here, stay grounded, stay grounded. And um, this is about being practical and realistic more specifically as well. Right, so we've got uh, Saturn, your ruler, will station retrograde on June the 29th at uh, 19 degree of Pisces. It will end um, in November, November the 15th at 12 uh, degrees of Pisces. So we're dealing with the degrees between the 12th and the 19th degree of Pisces. So have a look if you have any placements between these degrees because they will be triggered three times uh, this year. And this is because Saturn would have already crossed these degrees. Now it will be retrograde. It will go over these degrees once again. And then it will go over these degrees yet again once it stations direct. End of the year. Okay, so the retrograde here of Saturn in your third house of Pisces. So this is a, this is a time of reflection. This is a time when you'll be reassessing your goals, your achievements, your your life or when you're... Um, immediate surroundings so your connections with other people communication style any projects um anything to do with writing speaking um anything to do with um, mentally stimulating activities take this opportunity to examine your thought patterns um your learning abilities capabilities um Perhaps this is also about returning to some studies um, here to master some of your skills. It's a great time for doing so without a doubt. It's an introspective time, but here you have a chance to, to address any limitations or any challenges that may act as a blockage uh, in your ability to ex effectively express yourself. All right, so here we go Capricorns. Uh, thank you very much. I wish you a pleasant month and until the next time. Bye for now. Hello, Aquarius, and welcome to your monthly horoscope for June 2024. This month, we've got a new moon in Gemini and a full moon in Capricorn. Here on the 6th of June, we've got a new moon in Gemini at 16 degrees. And this new moon highlights um, your area of creativity self-expression, children, romance as well. So we've got the fifth house energies, new beginnings happening in this area of your life. So this new moon overall with Jupiter now here as well, along with Venus, Mercury, the sun. Here there's this energy generally encourages you to indulge in playful um, activities, fun, recreation, creativity. It's a great time for just enjoying, enjoying life for exploring new hobbies, new interests. With so much uh, Gemini activity, you probably seek a versatility. And um, you might be into minds as well. Maybe this is about being into minds uh, regarding a certain creative project or um, your romantic relationship, for example. So here you will know best how this will play out in your life. But overall, there is a lot of stimulation uh, connected to fun, pleasure, recreation, spending time with your children, um, being romantic or doing things of a romantic nature as well. Now, bear in mind, we've got a square to Saturn as well. Unfortunately, there is a square to Saturn. But here, squares, even though they represent challenges and tension, with squares, we can make really, really good progress. So there's something that stands in the way, especially here connected to your work, because the fifth house also deals with freelancing and um, self-employment. So if there's any, any, any kind of blockage, uh, any any obstacle, anything connected to maybe some delays uh, related to some payments then uh, don't get discouraged uh, just get on with it and and move forward we are dealing with um, multiple energy we just need to adapt be flexible and just go with the flow 
Right. So here we've got um, with the square here to your second house, Saturn. And maybe this is about finding a balance between your desire for um, enjoying life, being practical, um, perhaps um, being independent with a realistic and disciplined mindset. Right. So moving forward, uh, we've got Mars uh, moving into Taurus, and that's on June the 10th until July the 21st, roundabout, depending on where in the world you are, could be a day later or sooner. That's uh, here, Mars, that's your fourth house. And when Mars is in the fourth house of Taurus, uh, the sign of stability, this means that uh, a lot of energy and a lot of physical energy here throughout June and July will be dedicated towards uh, home improvements, um, home-related um, activities, uh, family gatherings. Here, Taurus is an earth sign. So perhaps you will be doing things of an earthy nature, working, um, doing gardening, working with the earth, um, reconstructing your garden or your floors, for example, in your home. But here we are dealing with the practical, realistic um, realities, so to speak. But also uh, perhaps uh, this could be related to, to working, literally working with the earth, uh, gardening, uh, planting. Now here with Mars, uh, Mars overall in the fourth house empowers you to make um, assertive, concrete changes, um, changes in your domestic life. In your family dynamics, uh, Mars in the fourth house in the home sphere also encourages you to take risks, especially when it comes to improving your living situation, your living standards, uh, or addressing some family issues. However, be, be aware of any potential conflicts with family members or any impulsive behavioral patterns, because there's also a tendency towards experiencing these. So here, instead, try to channel um, the energy of Mars in a productive way and um, in order to, to avoid disruptions, especially here in your home life. Now we've got a full moon in Capricorn on June the 22nd at one degree. This is the first out of the, the two full moons in Capricorn that will take place in June and July. And here, this full moon in Capricorn will be in your 12th house. And this signifies the culmination or a completion of a cycle related to hidden matters, spirituality, maybe some addictions, your private life, your inner world. And here, this uh, this full moon brings attention to, to themes related to responsibility, discipline, ambition as well. So I think with this full moon, if you want to move away from some old patterns, habits, um, anything that generally um, affects your mental health with that Capricorn energy, you can make it happen. So take this time to tr truly, truly reflect and um, on, on perhaps what, what do you want to let go of during this full moon. And um, here this full moon will, will form an out of sign square with Neptune in Pisces. And this can create tension between uh, that need for structure, discipline, order, and uh, perhaps your um, softer side of psyche, compassion, empathy, vulnerability. Here this square, this out of sign square could also reveal any illusions, any confusions that, um, that may have to be addressed. Uh, so here, stay grounded, uh, meditation, journaling, yoga, nature. This is all very much uh, beneficial during uh, that 12th house influence. Uh, now, on June the 29th, uh, we've got Saturn, your uh, traditional ruler, will station retrograde in Pisces at 19 degrees. And this retrograde will last until the 15th of November. It will end at 12 degrees of Pisces. This is your second house of income, finances, resources, possession. So during this time, you will be re-evaluating your personal values, your financial stability, security. And also you will probably have a look at, at uh, your material possessions. Maybe you will be decluttering, getting rid of things you don't need anymore. It's overall also a good time to, to reflect upon your connection, relationship with your money, your self-worth. So it's an amazing opportunity. To, to address any self-imposed limitations 
blockages, insecurities, especially those connected to your financial security, abundance. So here you use this use this uh, retrograde to to reassess your approach to managing and developing your resources, finances for for establishing a greater stability in your life. All right, so here we go, Aquarius. Thank you very much. I wish you a pleasant month. And until the next time, bye for now. Hello, Pisces, and welcome to your monthly horoscope for June 2024. So here we start the month with a new moon in Gemini happening on June the 6th at 16 degrees of Gemini. Now, this new moon brings uh, with it a uh, potential for new beginnings, for a fresh start here in the area connected to home, family, and also your emotional foundations. Now, this new moon encourages um, you to connect with your family, to redefine your emotional needs, perhaps to start a new project or a new chapter in your personal life. It's a really great time to consider changes um, in your living situation, to engage um, with, with loved ones, to find new ways to nurture yourself emotionally. Now, here with the new moon in Gemini here, well, overall, the, the Gemini energy encourages uh, intellectual curiosity and uh, adaptability in your domestic environment, encouraging you, pushing you to, to seek comfort, to seek security. Now, something to watch out for is that this new moon will square Saturn in Pisces, in your first house. And this can cause potential challenges and tensions between your desire for new beginnings, for a fresh start, and the need for discipline, responsibility, limitations, especially when it comes to your self-expression or personal identity. So here, take a more of a realistic approach to expressing your individuality during this time. Here with the Saturian energy, um, we are dealing with... Um, potentially long, long-term, long long-lasting energies. Now here on, on June the 10th, Mars will move into Taurus and it will stay here until July the 21st. Mars and Taurus represent very, very different energies. Mars is fast, feisty, fiery, while Taurus is, is slower, is stable, resistant to change. So here Mars and Taurus slows down quite significantly. And generally, this energy uh, of of Mars, of Mars, that fiery, feisty energy, brings a lot of drive and energy to your communication, to your learning, daily interactions, as well. Here, Mars will be transiting your third house of communication, and generally, this uh, this transit can make you feel more assertive, more confident when it comes to expressing your ideas, your opinions. And uh, you might be willing to take more risks or you might uh, be more fearless when it comes to expressing your ideas, expressing your opinions. Now here with uh, Mars in the third house, um, this transit also brings uh, potential um, when it comes to any arguments or conflict, especially when it comes to communication and a tendency towards um, impatience or, or impulsiveness as well. So here be mindful of these tendencies and try to channel the energy of Mars in a, in a productive way. Now, at the same time uh, here, you will have to uh, watch your speed when driving, when traveling. If you're planning on, on traveling during this transit, June, July, make sure that you... Um, that you're aware of your speed is very easy to drive faster than what you realize. Um, also, remember to display your tickets when parking. I remember when I had Mars transit in my third house years ago, I think I got it like two, two fines because I forgot to display the ticket because I was rushing to take my kids to, to the um, swimming lesson or something else. And, you know, I was distracted. So it's very easy to kind of, you know, you rush, 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 and then you forget about what you're supposed to do. And then you get in trouble. At the same time here, since the third house is also connected to our hands, traditionally, that Gemini energy, um, here you will also have to be mindful when watch, working with sharp objects because you can uh, hurt yourself as well. Here again, Mars makes us impatient, impulse, more impulsive with our actions. 
and this could generally here lead to um, some incidents. So just on the side note. Now on the on June the 22nd, we've got a full moon in Capricorn, the first out of the two full moons happening between June and July at one degree of Capricorn. So here this full moon happening in your 11th house of friendships, groups you belong to. Here, this full moon suggests a culmination or a completion of a cycle that started in January 2023. And here, this cycle is related to your friendships, social networks, and aspirations. So here, this full moon brings um, or turns your attention to, to themes uh, connected to fulfillment, uh, emotional connections with your friends or any groups that you belong to. To, but also your involvement and in in some humanitarian matters, for example. Take the time to reflect on your role within your social circle, among your friendships, um, your long term goals, hopes, plans for the future. Overall, this um, full moon may also prompt you to balance your individual hopes, goals, objectives with your contributions to the community that you belong to or the group that you belong to. Now, bear in mind this full moon forms an out of sign square with Neptune in Pisces. And this aspect may bring to light any illusions or confusions that need to be addressed, uh, perhaps um, in relation to your um, ideals, for example, and um, your involvement in, in groups, friendships, community that you belong to. So it's all about staying grounded without rushing with any uh, new ideas or any major, major decisions. Think things through here since Neptune is triggering this full moon. Now on June the 29th, uh, Saturn will station retrograde in Pisces at 19 degrees. And this retrograde will last until November the 15th. It will end at 12 degrees of Pisces. So we are dealing with the 12th until the 19th degree of Pisces. And here, that's your first house, so it's an important retrograde for you. Mm, a time of reflection, a time when you will be reassessing your personal goals, your achievements, achievements, uh, self-image, your approach to life, for example. And it's overall a great retrograde to reevaluate your goals, your objectives, and the way you present yourself to the outside world. Now here, this retrograde might also prompt you to, to address any self-imposed uh, limitations or insecurities that might be blocking your ability to uh, be assertive, to be confident, self-confident. So overall, it's a great opportunity with this retrograde to reconstruct your approach to self-expression, personal growth, for example. All right, so here we go, Pisces. Thank you very much. I wish you a pleasant month and until the next time. Bye for now.